So, uh, welcome to book club. This book club is on the book "Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep" by Philip K. Dick. And uh, that's Will. This is in your your wheelhouse, right? Your androids, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you want to give a, a brief summary of the uh, of the story? Uh, sure. Um, "Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep" is an okay Dick novel. Um, set in a post-apocalyptic world, a, a, um, a dystopian future where um, there was a very terrible war on Earth that uh, poisoned the atmosphere and caused nearly all life to die with the exception of human beings um, who are being um, evacuated or encouraged to, uh, to immigrate from Earth to um, other planets. Um, the perspective is told from uh, two characters, one um, guy by the name of Decker, who is a, um, who, who retires, air quote, replicants, and the other one from uh, another guy that I remember if I weren't named retarded, who is uh, himself retarded um, due to um, environmental contamination. And um, it's it's sort of about the the hopeless and um, uh, sort of uh, existential ennui of of uh, humanity in this uh, this dark future. Um, it touches on um, a lot of different themes: uh, what it means to be human, um, what it means to be alive, um, the significance of all these things, um, uh, the meaning of the soul. Um, uh, the, the the value or or uh, problems of conformity, um, um, a, a whole whole series of uh, of things, and uh, it's I think it's 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 a a solid piece of literature, uh, despite being science fiction, which uh, frequently people look upon science fiction as being kind of incapable of being literature, and I think uh, this is a clear evidence that that's nonsense. Yeah. So uh, I, I liked the book overall. It wasn't uh, wasn't wasn't a bad book. Um, it's definitely different than the uh, the movie that they made. Uh, was it Blade Runner with Harrison yeah. Ford? So is there two books? Because there's do there there's like a nine hour version of Blade Runner based on um, this book. I think, but then I can't tell whether they're different. It's just, a, is it the same story, but just a longer version? Because it's by the same author. The, not, the nine hour one is actually Do Androids Dream of Electra Sheep. The uh, two hour one is a BBC production. No, but I mean, there's, because because there's, there's, there's Blade. Okay, because see, I can't find the, so is it Blade Runner based on Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Yeah, Blade Runner is the Harrison Ford movie that basically they took the world from this and the name Deckard and the the concept of androids and pretty much that's that's about the uh, the connection between the two. Yeah, it's just really confusing because it seems like there's two books. Well, they probably wrote a book after, but Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep is the book. Blade Runner is the movie. They might have turned the movie story into a book, but I didn't see it. They they um, did an updated version of, or I guess they, they did a modified version of the Android stream of Electric Sheep, which they retitled Blade Runner. Um, yeah, however, so if you compare the text between the two, uh, you'll find that they're all but identical. So okay, so that is they're identical. I'm not quite sure. I don't feel like they are. I feel like they're two different stories. Okay, so. Um, Again, the, the nine hour one, you felt was different now. No, because I know that the BBC one is an abridged version. I get that, but there's another audio book. Uh, like the so trigger, the one that you actually post in um yeah. in the book is different than the one that gets posted afterwards. So if you listen to them, so um the one that Fern posts is they start differently. Like it's like they're two different stories. And then the other one that you post, which is the audio book starting with chapter one, it starts as a different story. Yeah. So the first one that I posted is the is the actual book. 
uh, that coincides with the PDF that uh, Will did because I listened to it for a while. So yeah. he posted a PDF, and the one that um, I posted first was the same story. Okay. What else? I don't know. The, there was another, I don't know. I, I went through a bunch of different like YouTube videos of audiobooks, and it seemed like there were two stories because they would start differently. Oh gosh, wow. so I don't know what I, I have read in the end. <laughs> I have no idea <laughs> what book I read. Audiobook. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, um, I really liked it. Well, the BBC thing was really well done. Um, I, I did, so can, I did can miss ruin? whatever happened to the goat, though. At the end of the book, I was I was a little confused. Oh, she killed it. <laughs> oh. Okay. She killed what? Him. Really? Um, well, yeah, the, uh, the replicant uh, that, that he had sex with uh, went to his house. Rachel. So Rachel, yeah, was she Rachel was she human or goes. not? No, she no. was not a human. No, but then she was, when she, she was, was dying, a, okay, so she was because when she was dying, it made it seem like oh, like she was human the entire time. Well, yeah, that's that's one of the things that's, that's oh, okay. here is that all of the um, it's hard. One of the points of the story is is that the, the all of the artificial life has been specifically designed to seem as realistic as possible and yeah. uh, with the if, with the animals it there's no internal um sort of um empathetic reality to uh to to say with the uh the archer sheep but say with the nexus six robots um they the the designers have done as much as they can to create an artificial soul um so the the, the robots um are capable of empathizing but they uh, they have difficulty or they'll empathize with different things. So the human beings will frequently empathize with other human beings and they'll empathize with uh, other living creatures. And the robots usually will not be able to empathize with those things, but they will be able to empathize with one another. Yeah. Um, and and if they have to form a personal relationship with with a uh, with a human being. They can then start empathizing with that human being, and the point is, is that they're getting closer and closer and closer. So the Nexus Six, this is just you know one slice of what's been happening here, are the latest edition of these these uh, art these artificial people, and uh, they've gotten realistic enough that this story happens. But the thing is, what happens to the Nexus Seven and Eight and Nine? Because they get more human every single edition, and the goal of the Rosen Corporation, which in the movies was renamed the Tyrell Corporation for some reason. Um, the goal of the, of the Rosen Corporation, quite obviously, is to create a, a uh, an artificial person that is so indistinguishable from a, uh, a normal human in all respects that you literally cannot distinguish one from the other. It's just you can't at all, period. Yeah, so there's there's he has his test that he does, which is like the verbal test, and then in the mock department, they say that they use another test. So oh. was that test not real then? Because they had them like it was a made up Android, pretty much no. like. No, they were, they were, they were both. Um, both departments were real, and they were uh, unaware of each other. I'm not entirely sure why that was. I think that was um, more to make the, um, the reader kind of question reality. Whether he's an Android or not. Well, that also, but like how much of what's going on is delusion. Like, what if you're not actually working with the police department? What if you just think you are because you're brain damaged? Right? Yeah, that was that was actually a really um, interesting that they they made that, that's that's how you know he's a good writer because the way that he played that out really for a moment there, you're just like, wait, what? Like, I was listening to it and I I got up actually. And I'm like, wait. So is he an android? And then, and then he makes the thing about like how every android has been uh, based on a real human model. Mm -hmm. And then they could have just switched each other out at some point. Like you will never know who is an android and who isn't. Well, yeah. And there's a lot of the of the, uh, the androids who um, will delete information from their uh, their minds, or will uh, be uh, manufactured to not know they're a robot. So they'll, they'll have implanted memories, uh, and they'll believe that they're human. Um, 
And so if you think you're human, are you human or were you just made to think you're human and you're a robot? Right. Yeah, that, that seemed to be his, his dilemma that, that came up. Um, the same thing with the, the other hunter that was in the, the other location um, mm -hmm. that was working with um, androids and was unaware of it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Because they talk about how uh, Rachel slept with him to try to get him to not retire androids anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Rachel was designed basically to, um, to, to emotionally fuck up um, the, uh, these uh, bounty hunters' um, empathetic relationship with the machines such that they were, they were emotionally incapable of killing them because you had sex and had this, uh, this personal relationship with, a, uh, with an android. And now when you kill one, you're going to, um, you're going to be too kind of emotionally tore up as you do it, to be able to do it with your conscience. Yeah, um, a, a ploy to humanize the androids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was, that was done specifically by the, uh, the Rosen Corporation um, to, again, because I mean, it's, it's clear the Rosen Corporation wants to, uh, to, to, to uh, start putting robots and human beings in the same context and have one not tell who the other is, or at least have the humans not tell the robots. Yeah, it seems like a weird goal, though. Well, it's like the Turing test. Um, it's pretty much the same thing, isn't it? His test is the Turing test. Oh, well, not no not way. really, because because no. well, because it's not about whether they're self-aware. I guess they are already sentient. So. Well, the, the, the Turing test is really vague. The Turing test is is um, can you not tell the difference? It doesn't, it, there's nothing in the Turing test that says how you're telling whether they. Yeah. It's the you. And so it was also interesting ways of how they measured empathy, right? Like that's the whole. How are they? How do you measure that? How do? How did they? Was like he didn't even have physiological. Like was he watching her physiological responses? Yes. yes. Yeah. They they would uh, they attached some sensors uh, to the skin, and then there was that uh, there was that. A uh, beam of light that went into the eyeball, and uh, okay. went with the um, the Voight comp test. Um, the um, it was based on the premise that um, there was a uh, involuntary uh, micro contraction in the iris of, of uh, the eye um, when someone encounters a um, something that has an emotional reaction. Um, and so they had a whole bunch of little sensors hooked up to their body, and then they asked them questions. Yeah. Well, staring at their iris and um they would then they would then uh have a synthesis of all the sensor information as well as watching their iris and and uh it, uh, it was relevant in it as well it was whether how fast the reaction was so uh if they said something that was um uh, uh, was supposed to have a, an emotional reaction on something um and there was no reaction and then suddenly there was later uh, like a second later, or uh, that would mean later. they're faking it, right? Exactly. They 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 went through a process, some sort of an intellectual process, where they realized that they should have had a reaction and something they just created. It was too late. Um, and then the other thing that would do it is when um, they'd ask some questions, and there was like one thing that would cause an emotional reaction, and something else that intellectually would seem to cause an emotional reaction, but doesn't in humans. And what would happen is the replicant would um would have no emotional reaction the first thing they're supposed to and would the other thing is like mm, boom okay so it's kind of like um a thing when they have the uh, they they call it like a validation question to see if the person responds similarly to the same thing or whether they're actually paying attention mm -hmm. but i don't know like is it is it i feel like a human could take a moment to realize how they feel about something so. Well, no, the, it's designed to be like something that you would have like an automatic, like uh, emotional response to type thing. But like those the, questions the, didn't the making like a questions. wallet or making his uh, his wallet or satchel or whatever out of out of baby skin, right? Like yeah, if okay. somebody tells you that you 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 instinctively have a reaction to somebody saying that their their fashion style is baby skin, 
Right. I, I just felt like the questions were like, there's a wasp and the wasp does, like, I don't know. It would just, I get that in the context of the book and, and the, how you react to animals. So, so that's also interesting the way that, um, the way that they like, animals are like sacred and protected and to have like an animal, a real animal pet is like a huge amount of money. But then with, with the androids and that whole, that whole part where, where the two androids are like mutilating the spider. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, was, they so have that, no, no concept or caring uh, because the reason that like humans care about the, uh, the animals they're dying off, you know, something's going away. Like we, we are, we have, you know, I guess empathy for the extinction of the animals, which we see in humans now. Right. Um, and so the androids are obviously more of the sociopathic, whereas the animals serve no purpose. So who cares? Or like, why is it that we're, we're maybe it's not sociopathic of like, what do they see in this animal when we are like talking, walking, existing? Why is it that they're more important than us? I feel like that's how they would probably see it. Well, no, no, one, no one's saying more important, right? They're, they're just cherished, right? Yeah, there's the, the religion of mercerism. Yeah. Right. That's 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 the ideology, I guess, of this discovery, which is this sort of um, this, this sort of sad, um, desperate holding on to something that's dying, and they there's nothing they can do to stop it from dying. They, uh, they try. They try. Yeah. Let's talk about the wife. Hmm. Anybody, anybody so have any, any thoughts or opinions on that, weirdo? So she's <laughs> actually not in the BBC version. Mm-hmm. Yep. Neither yeah. in the movie. Um, and, and yeah, she's not in the movie either. Yeah. Well, she exists to show the sort of complexity of, of, uh, of Deckard's because this is his wife. And this is also... Um, Together, they, they give a, an interesting representation of what human, humanity is on this world. Right? One very interesting thing about uh, the relationship with his wife, as much as I was able to um, perceive it, is that in, in, this, uh, in their society, empathy is extremely important, and it is important to feel, to feel empathy for humanity, for animals, for anything. And, um, and so on and so forth. But in that relationship between the two of them, I do not think that there was a lot of empathy. empathy. So it well, was sort of an inversion of what, you know, everything is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the relationship reminded me of uh, Fahrenheit. Mm. Right, you remember right. That, that married couple? Yes. It, it reminded yeah. me a lot of that, that same, same type of uh, relationship dynamic. Well, at the end, you can you can see that there was a lot of genuine love, um, and uh, because there's a whole thing with the, uh, the frog, remember? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, she does she does care for him. It's just that she is herself kind of zonked out on her uh, on her artificial feelings all the time. That's one of the big things as well. Is they have these machines that allow them to enter any emotional state they desire. And they've got like a dial, and every emotional state is like a number. And uh, you turn the dial, I guess, to whatever you want it to feel. You know, they don't even know what all the numbers do. Um, I think they've got to experiment with them. So like, one of the things yeah. that's annoying Deckard is his wife is in the middle of this, uh, this programmed uh, depressed despair that she has intentionally keyed in the machine so she can basically be emo most of the yeah, well, uh, if you remember in uh, Fahrenheit 451, the the wife um, was really like constantly talking about the family and the TV and thing. Yeah. But that was the same kind of yeah. feel I got for the Mercerism and uh, Decker's wife. Mm-hmm. Was that that same? Um, because uh, when it, when he got the goat, she really mm-hmm. wanted to go down and and merge with Mercer um, mm-hmm. at, to be thankful for for the goat, and he just mm-hmm. wanted to like be in the moment. Mm-hmm. And so it seemed like the the same thing. Like so there's does she a. Uh, try, so does she empathize with the like ro- like the robotic animals in some ways? Uh, no. Well, she did. She did uh, in the beginning of the book was talking about how how uh, bad it was, like the retiring of androids. I can't remember exactly mm-hmm. what she said, but she was empathizing with them in the beginning. Okay. Mm-hmm. So his, I would uh, imagine. His, his, uh, his crude, uh, cold cop hands. 
and yeah. how, he was, how he was murdering the, uh, the, the androids. And uh, I, I don't think that was a genuine feeling because she's, she's always in one sort of artificial emotional state or another that she's dialed. And I don't think she arrives at emotional states generally in an authentic way. I think she more or less presses a button and then feels that. And mm, okay. one of the few times when that didn't happen was at the very end when she felt a lot of empathy and affection and she was very moved by um, how, I guess kind of weird her husband was being when he came back out of the wasteland covered in the toxic dust with this little box and his large, his large kind of um, soulful eyes and inside of this box was the toad that uh, for him had kind of a, um, it, it was a religious experience. And, um, and of course that was after he had gone through hell. Deckard um, has gone through hell. He, he, went, he, he killed the, the six Nexus robots. Um, he was getting emotionally uh, uh, screwed around with them. He has yeah. gone through these, these kind of uh, religious journeys effectively because you know, his whole notion about what is morality, what, is the, what does it mean to be human, all these sort of things are being challenged for him in the middle of his job. And and uh, he's he's questioning all these these things. And he's on the clock. His boss is telling him X, Y, and Z. He's got to do this right now. And he's exhausted. And he does this whole thing. And he basically just kind of comes out. And he is burned out when he comes back. He's got nothing left. And um, and so when he we find at the very end of, of the book, uh, she is going to program in um, uh, an emotional state for him, which is. Um, uh, peace brought on by long deserved rest or something. Right? Yeah. Like that. And she then realizes as as he, as he as he lays down, it's unnecessary to get in because he's already there. Yeah, his uh, his uh what's it the test that he gave himself? Uh, I'm trying oh, so to he does when, that, uh, doesn't he? Yeah, when when the when the other the other uh bounty hunter kills the uh the droid in the elevator or yeah. the lift or whatever. Um, the he, singer. He, he now he wants to to uh, kill that guy, and he's hoping he's an android. And then it turns mm -hmm. out that he's not, and he realizes that he was empathizing with the android, which is uh, kind of a problem for his job. Mm -hmm. Which he he gets he he crosses um, past that as well. I mean, that was what um, with with the uh, the Nexus robot. I forget, I keep forgetting names uh, from from the Rosen Corporation tried to do to him. But when he realized that he um, he he became able to, or at least so he said, he could, he could keep killing them forever. It wouldn't be a problem. Um, I feel he, like it would have been interesting if Rachel did turn out to be human in the end, though. Well, that was another thing that was a problem um, was that, uh, and this is one of the things the Rosen Corporation, it's one of the police were also concerned about, is there are certain people. Um, they just inherently don't have a lot of empathy. It's just like a neurological yeah. condition. Mm -hmm. And so consequently, they will read his androids according to the test. And then what? They're going to murder some guy because he uh, doesn't have the uh, human normal level of empathy. And how empathetic is it to murder someone for a lack of empathy? Well, you're, you're, you're killing robots. Yeah, well, you retire, I guess. Yeah, I like that distinction. This the distinction in the book in the book that they kept. Um, he kept saying retire, and then the androids would be like, "No murder." Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, that, yeah. That's part of one of the the underlying questions that the the story is is bringing up. Right. At what at what point are they a a living thing in which it would be murder? Right, I mean, they're self-aware. They they know what they are. They're they're seeking to survive, um, and yeah. protect themselves. Yes. So, at, at what point are they are they no longer just a a machine, but actually a living thing? And even the morality of giving them a four year lifespan, like just oh, for no other reasons than that, just cause. No, 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 no. That was no, they attention. couldn't. Yeah. They 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 didn't have the ability to. Uh, apparently, it wasn't. Uh, it was a, a metabolic. Um, oh right, yeah, you're right. Yeah, and and they they they've tried to increase the lifespan, but they can't. Um, mm -hmm. they so reproduction yeah. or something like that. 
So, but yeah, the, do they like bleed out? Like, I don't, I see this is, it's really confusing. Like, and I don't, even with the Rachel's death. So do they have like human, like are the, are yes. the bodies supposed to be human or mechanical? Um, they are so indistinguishable from a human being that if you do a medical examination of them, you need to take a bone graft and put it under a microscope. Yeah. If you if you remember when he was arrested, when he tried to get the singer the first yeah. time, and he was taken, they actually did the the test on the the Russian android that he had in his car. To yeah. Determine. Yeah, they had to do the the bone graft test. So just from observation, you can't tell the difference. That's yeah, so, I, mean, I don't understand why designing something like that then in the first place. Well, yeah, exactly. So that's the thing with the Rosen Corporation. So, I mean, like, it's not really explained in the book, but it's possible that the notion is that the, the intention of the machines is ultimately to replace humanity. Totally. Like, that's what the Rosen mm -hmm. Corporation is actually trying to do. Is they're trying to, like, if humanity is non viable for whatever reason, like, if humanity is doomed then the Rosen Corporation might be thinking, well, our robots can survive in these hostile environments, they can survive in the toxic world, they can survive in the radiation. If I can make them indistinguishable from human and they can survive, the yes. humanity can sort of survive. And I think that's, I, I don't know, this is my interpretation. It's, it's never explained. Yes, well, and they, I they think- They don't, go ahead. Uh, it's just a very interesting dynamic that uh, we have between uh, androids and humans in that, I don't think either are wrong to, you know, engage in this conflict, because indeed, if uh, if you choose to co if they choose to coexist within uh, the same space, then the obvious um, the future for them is that one will repla replace the other, and it will more than likely be androids replacing humans. So I think I view it, the conflict as a sort of um, conflict between two competing uh, species that occupy the same spot in the food chain. Yeah. I still don't understand how they could I, biologically be human and then not age and then they just die after four years and not need to eat or drink or like it's- Well, they're not it's, necessarily biological. They're, they're not like biologically human. They are like they're clones, a, kind of a, bi like a, a biological a robot clone, right? right? They're a biological robot, okay? Right. Uh, just think of it like a robot where, uh, okay, so you know, like if, if I show you like the automatronic Abe Lincoln robot, right? At Disney, uh, and you cut through the skin, you would see, uh, you know, uh, servos and 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 control rods and stuff, right? Well, what if. The illusion, right, that I was trying to create that was on the exterior, what if I kept doing that as you cut in, right? So I've made an artificial heart, and I've made artificial lungs, and I've made artificial kidneys. Okay, well, right. Okay. Right, yeah. so I've made all these little things. And also, hey, I'm using up all this space for this stuff. I kind of need it actually to also do something. So the kidneys, what are they going to do? They, they might do the same thing they do in a human being as far as you know, filtering out contamination, whatever. But it may also just be a battery that looks like a And there are th these clues that, you know, they do not uh, grow, they do not, they are not born. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they are, yeah, as they I understood it, uh, um, what I'm, I'm looking for the word, uh, not arranged, but uh, constructed, something mm -hmm. like that. Not, not the yeah, word I was was good enough. Yes. And there's the whole thing with the, the colonization. I think they're mostly colonizing Mars. They might be colonizing other places. Is um, Mars is in, in the story is basically exactly what it is right now. It's it's a uh, it's an, um, a barely inhabitable um, wasteland, right? Yeah. Where everybody lives in in, in these. Uh, these kind of domed cities um, and uh, an inducement to go to Mars or wherever they're going is that you, you get your own uh, Android for free, I guess, um, that will just be your manservant. Um, well, that getting away from the, uh, the nuclear radiation, since the dust obviously turns people retarded, probably <laughs> might be better to be on Mars at that point. Right. 
Right, but yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm fully with you. Uh, it, it's, it's just that that's, that is an element of what they're making the robots for. Is the robots um, basically do whatever needs to be done on Mars to keep everybody alive. And so you don't actually have to really do anything. Yeah. Just so it's a, it's a slave robot army. Exactly. The robots have been made so human that they feel like slaves. And, and one of the things that goes on with um, uh, the, the reason why the robots went to Earth in the book as opposed to the movie is they're not trying to extend their life. What they're trying to do is be human because they can't be human in the colonies for whatever reason. Um, they are they're locked into, um, into kind of a caste system. Uh, and and uh, they, it's, it's menial and uh, they don't feel fulfilled. But on Earth, because there are no robots, or at least they're not supposed to be, they, they can pass for a while anyway as human beings and it allows yeah. the robots to do what they actually want to do, which is be treated like a person, which is actually what they want. Yeah. And they talk about the the android that's the musician, right? Lux or what's her name? Yeah. Um, and her part was actually really interesting because she she she's like noted she's looking at art and talking about her empathizing with the art. Yeah. In some ways, but then they he still but then she can't empathize with the human in that test. Mm -hmm. More like with the animal, I would say. Or with the animal, yeah. Because it has mostly to do with animals. Well, no, because she gets upset about him asking about relationships and then starts calling him a pervert. Pervert because he's, like, asking questions about well, what he would I do think for her. She was just trying to get away from... Yeah, she, yeah, she knew course. she was yeah. an android. She knew she yeah. would fail the test. And she was buying time because she'd put out the call, right? That's the other android... Mm -hmm. That came in and picked him up, the one that um, Resh killed in the, the station later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? She was just buying time um, for him to show up so that she would. Yeah, no, I got that. Yeah. But he was asking, like, not necessarily just animal questions about interpersonal relationships as well with other humans. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, they, they're, they're basically the concept is that the, those things elicit a. Um, measurable response in humans that the androids can't match. Yeah. And it's involuntary. Yeah. But then they have the capacity to love still. Mm -hmm. And apparently yeah. Rosen does that for them or gives that to them. How so? Because even with um with Rachel in the end where she she's she acts like she wants to be with him and then she admits that he was she was using him the entire time but this was this time it was different. And then she comes back even after and then she kills his goat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah that's true. I don't, I'm not, not finding that very loving. Yeah. I mean, what you mean that, that's, that they don't resolve in this is everybody lies, right? And so yeah. there's a lot of unreliable narrators and characters, characters that will tell you something, but are they are they just lying to you? Right? There's very yeah, there's a lot of that. No, no, nobody really was trustworthy throughout the yeah. story. I mean, remember Mr. Friendly. Right? Mm. Is that his name? The, the guy on TV? Something, something friendly? I thought. Buster uh, friendly. There was. Buster friendly. Uh, yeah. That's the one. Yeah, yeah so he was. Uh, Buster friendly is, is standing up there talking about mercerism. Um, and uh, it's funny because the uh, the special, uh, the guy who has been rendered quasi uh, retarded by the, uh, by the toxic atmosphere. Um, actually, his he sees through Buster Friendly before everybody else does. You know, right. he says he find he, he he sees all these subtle ways in which Buster is undermining mercerism, making light of it, and then uh, Buster comes out later on to say that mercerism was a lie, um, and uh, and it's also revealed that Buster is is an android. Uh, he didn't Buster doesn't say that, but the, the replicants that are living with uh, special. Um, yeah. they say, uh, yeah, yeah, no, he's, uh, he's one of us. He's a next six robot, just like us. And um, it, it's the only thing that makes sense because Buster is basically on the air 23 hours a day, every day. And he's got guests that will be there with him for like five days in a row. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, so, yeah. So they make uh, a new bust friendly. That. So they make a new bust friendly every four years, then. They must. <laughs> well, it's the mm -hmm. uh, what? What is it? They're keeping the opposition forces. So when when you have that enemy to fight, it, it's uh, you keep them around because it, it gives them the ratings and the money and distracts people. Mm -hmm. Right, so like the uh, the super conservative talk show host and the uh, super liberal talk show host, and they're constantly attacking each other. Well, yeah. So I mean, like the, the Mercer exists within that the, the empathy net, and um, and Buster exists within the media, and they're not the same thing, hmm. right? And the uh, the I don't think the androids can interact even with the empathy net at all. So that that machine where they like. For example, sharing uh, the experience of getting that goat. I don't think the androids can interface. Yeah. So. Yeah, it actually didn't. I don't think it says anything about that, does it? Yeah. Oh, and, well, and then, well, no. It's one of the reasons why the androids want to destroy the concept of mercerism because it's something they can't. Uh, they can't experience. And uh, the androids, uh, in, are, they basically are, are arguing that empathy is, um, the, the whole religion of mercerism is a lie, a fraud, and it's meaningless. And uh, this is just the humans basically trying to come up with some stupid thing that, that, uh, that justifies their, their, uh, their rights to, to, uh, to murder us or, 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 uh, or do whatever. And... Um, and and so and even Mercer himself says, well, yeah, it is a lot, hmm. right? Which right. is one of the interesting things because th what you also get in the book is is uh, the conflict between the metaphysical and the physical, right? Wherein the the Mercer, who is very much a metaphysical character, effectively, right, um, will conceive that he his his reality is not physical reality, so it's untrue and true at the same time. Androids who are purely focused on the physical uh, are completely right. I am a fraud, physically. Right. But there's also a truth um, as to what's going on here beyond the purely physical. And there, I'm completely legit, and they can't even touch this. So what did, what did we think were uh, shortcomings in the book? Uh, I don't know. I really, I overall really liked it. I mean, I kind of want to actually go read the whole book because I've <laughs> only gotten the abridged version. Um, I think this is like the second or third time now that that the uh, that has been said in one of these book club streams. Maybe yeah. I should have read the book. Yeah. <laughs> no, usually I do. Um, usually I do, but this month. <laughs> I swear, you keep it up, and we are going to be reading all of the uh, Hunger Game books. That's what we'll do. Why? Because you'll actually read them. I've already read those yeah. ones. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Technically, though, they do count as apocalyptic, universal. Uh, they, they do I actually the like the, I, I do. I do like them. They're not. They're not I like. I like the first book um, the most, and the concept behind it. Um, mm -hmm. The Hunger Games, I'm just going to watch the movies. <laughs> and, then, and then I'm going to pretend like I read the book. Yes, me too. Yeah. Oh, that's sad. Right? Yeah. It's only fair. <laughs> and one, one interesting thing about this book is I'm not sure how much of, of this concept is, uh, you know, between the lines, but. After that uh, World War Terminus, is that how they called it? Yes. Um, yeah. Yes. And all the an most of the animals died, all the owls died, uh, and so on. How much guilt do you think that the survivors had because no. because of what was um, you know what their kind, humankind, did to the planet Earth, but also as a guild of as the survivors guild and mm -hmm. how much do you think of it was between the lines and how much of it was you know within characters and their psyches 
I suppose that will be the question. Hmm. What? It and how is it expressed then? Because their, their, their social work within their community is entirely represented uh, with how many animals they shepherd. Yes. They're not they're not technically pets. They are responsibilities. Um, you that's that's why you know it's better to have like a goat than it is to have a cat. Right? Goat is yeah. Cat. But is it a but is it um, a, a genuine uh, guilt for, uh, that every person feels for that, or is it uh, just them conforming to societal norms? Both. Is it personal, or is it you know just? Both. It's not, it's not. It's not one or the other. It's both. At the same time. Mm -hmm. Think of it like money, right? Um, you have um, both. You, you want to obtain it. Um, both for social capital, right? Like if you have a lot of money, it means you must be an important person or something. People will, will treat you differently. And so you desire that. But at the same time, there's also a sense of self-worth, right? Because you've internalized um, some of these some of these social perceptions within yourself. And so you perceive yourself differently um, based on the kind of recognition you get from society for doing certain things. And so it's both at the same time because you bought into the system. Mm -hmm. All right. Could you guys? Uh, go, sorry, go ahead. No, I just thought maybe to continue with this. Uh, so, how much do you think would uh, the society would that society eventually uh, welcome their android overlords? Precisely because of the, the, the guilt that of their you know their legacy. Well, the, the androids are not seen as um, alive. As, well, they're not yeah. seen as, as as being a redemption of humanity. They're seen mm. as because for humanity to feel redeemed in, in this case, they basically have to undo World War tournaments. They have to bring back um, the, the verdant, um, bountiful Earth. Their, their beautiful blue planet that has turned into a smoggy, uh, puke green planet, uh, full of toxic dust storms, and um, and uh, you know desiccated trees that that didn't even rot because whatever would would rot a tree away died at the same time the tree died, and so the trees just um, just basically blow away in the wind. I mean, total death. Mm -hmm. and that's, and so that's, I, sorry. No, finish what you're saying. Well, okay, so like it, it ends in Oregon, right? That's one of the that's the wasteland that it goes to. It goes to the wasteland of Oregon. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with what Oregon looks like right now. Uh, Oregon is, has rainforests. Um, Oregon is uh, is is uh, it's that large unspoilt um, wildernesses there. I mean, they're all relatively close to infrastructure and highways and so on. But, um, you know, they've got uh, giant uh, redwood trees and redwood forests and all that kind of stuff. It's very, um, it, it's a place that feels very natural, very alive. It has kind of a prehistoric and historical feel about it in certain parts of Northern California and, uh, and Southern Oregon. And uh, that's where Decker found a toad in, um, in the dust. Going, going through, you know, the uh, the, uh, the the forest that had uh, fallen apart to such an extent that uh, you know, it was just stumps with, uh, with with kind of wind blowing between. There's nothing else. Is it? Yep. Uh, what is it? Do, 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 do. I, I, so I, you are going to say something. Yeah, I was just like I'm. I'm so I'm looking at um some of the quotes from the book, and um there's a quote saying evident empathy evidently existed only in the human community, whereas intelligence to some degree could be found in every phlegm and um every phlegm and order, including arachnida or whatever. So it's just interesting that. The empathy was what is just being seen as like a specific human 
characteristic. Um, and there's another one. So here they're saying the American and Soviet police had publicly stated that mercerism reduced crime by making citizens more concerned about their plight of neighbors. Mankind needs more empathy. Yeah. Yes. So, so they were socially engineering people to like, and how do they know that's not what, led, what leads to the, maybe that's what leads them to make these androids in the first place. Well, the Rosen Corporation doesn't seem especially connected because you know, there was that conversation with, um, with the Nexus 6 robot at the Rosen Corporation and they had that whole thing go back and forth. And then there was interaction with one of the uh, human, probably human uh, engineers or business guys who, who actually runs the, the Rosen Corporation. And he was yeah. very he was very disappointed that um, the Decker could tell that the, that the Nexus Six robot was um, was a robot. Um, yeah. He he first tried to pass off um, the robot as a totally normal human, and then he fell back to her being a uh, sort of a, a neuro atypical human being who doesn't have much. Yeah. Food, right. Mm -hmm. And uh, then ultimately had to concede, and this was kind of a slumping of the shoulders and a disappointment, that uh, they failed again to completely create an art. I mean, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to create artificial people. Um, you know, and, and, and so they, they did the same thing with the owl, which is one of the creatures that uh, went extinct um, very quickly, so that they, they weren't able to save the owl. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> the, the, they were, they had an owl was flying around in the office, and that that bird, um, Decker was, was amazed. He was like, "How do you have one of these? Like they were extinct." And they were like, "Yeah, no, we uh, we got one from a, from a private buyer, and uh, we're going to breed them, and we're going to bring back the owl." And then later it's revealed, "No, it's a robotic owl. They don't they don't actually have any real creatures in there at all. It's it's all robots." I just yeah, that, was, that was disappointing. I just I, is it because they they talk about that they there's a limit to how much empathy they can put into the android, so they have to meet like this low empathy. But then at the same time, they're also like engineering people to be more empathetic. So you don't even know if it's like natural human empathy or just that they have been like kind of through this mechanism, kind of been um, lobotomized in some way. I feel like it's 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 instead of by by putting in too much feeling to people into people without making them be able to be functional. Like even well, his it was reactionary. Yeah, to the terminus one. The terminus yeah. one was seen as a failure of empathy. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, damn near uh, um, global uh, Armageddon. You know. Yeah. Well, the Earth is dead. I, yeah, but it's like it's such an it's it's an interesting then that that, that that's a ba band aid solution that like oh we just need people to like each other more that's what leads to war we don't like each other enough not yeah. about empathy it's 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 still ill informed I think and so well, I don't know there, if that there is in the something book. to it there there's something to that to that idea mm -hmm. you know what I mean <laughs> like if if you liked people like. The chances of the United States and Britain going to war, right? So if like Donald Trump and Theresa May just decided they wanted to have it out, how much of the military or the general public do you think would be willing to have that fight? And we're not even that close, right? So if we it's actually had empathy, empathy for everybody. Them, it's because we actually like agree with their view of life and the things that they believe in. I don't think it's a lack, like nobody's lacking empathy for what's going on in Uganda or the Middle East or like any of that kind of stuff. It's not like. You need to eat out more then. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe there's some, but I don't well, think well, like. Look around. Do the Ugandans the, have empathy for you? I don't know. And I if you think about countries that used to go to war with each other for hundreds of years, like. Um, Britain and France, for example, do you think that they would go to war against each other today? I think not. No, probably not. Through mere exposure effect, yeah, like you yes. we get to know people and you get to like them more. It's, 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 I understand that. I just think that like the idea that the new, a nuclear war 
on the entire planet was just because people just can't learn to get along <laughs> is a little bit minimalistic. <laughs> well, well, it isn't necessarily um, whether or not they can get along, it's whether they uh, they see each other as being valuable. Right, and and that's really what empathy is to a large extent. It's it's about being able to project your own mentality into someone else's context, see things from their perspective, and value them as as uh, is valid agency in the universe. Right, and so one of the things that occurs with really awful wars, right, take the uh, Hitler's Holocaust, right. There was definitely a failure to empathize with a lot of poor human beings who were, uh, you know. Shuffled off into camps, um, I mean, starved and worked to work to death, and then um, you know uh, 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 pulled us into mass graves. Right? Isn't like the first thing that you have to be able to do uh, that you have to do to be able to kill? I'm not sure, but I would assume to be able to otherize, um, you know, your opponent, the one that you want to kill, you have to view it as an other. You can't. Well, that was the theory of the Rosen Corporation. And Deckard actually got beyond that because yeah. it's not it's not necessarily it's, it's helpful usually to other somebody to kill them. You don't necessarily have to do it. And yeah, so that's why people kill their wives all the time. They're not otherizing their wives. Yeah, I, I their husbands. <laughs> well, no, I mean, so like Deckard, he's, he's, he saw uh, he talked to Mercer, and Mercer said it's it's a bad thing you're doing, but you have to do it. It's a bad thing that you have to do. It. And um, and so uh, Mercer had, I think, empathy for the androids as well. He, uh, yeah. he never, never spoke unfavorably about them. He said that they, you know, were uh, in some sense smarter than than uh, people already. Um, they were seeing things in a very clear way. Um, and he agreed with them about a lot of, about a lot of things. But at the same time, um, that is only sort of one layer of perception. Right, and that's the thing with, with Mercer. Is Mercer is basically a messiah. He's he's you know he's he's existing in this whole kind of uh, religious context, and uh, and that deals with more than what is what is reality right now. It also deals with like kind of reality over larger spans of time. So something that is unreal right now, if you keep investing in it over time, it becomes real in the future. And so one of the things that Mercer is getting at is this whole notion of, of doing things, not for their immediate consequences, but doing them for um, sort of a, a cumulative um, thing. So like part of what Mercer wants to do is he wants all the humans to know they're not alone. That's one of the things he keeps saying. I'm not here to save you. I'm here so you know you're not alone. Uh, because he can't save you. He, can't, he has not have the power to save humanity. What he has the power to do is to connect everybody to everybody else so that they can endure, which is ultimately all humanity needs to do is survive this, uh, this, this horrible winnowing of, of, uh, of their existence and transition over to something else that you know, perhaps can, can uh, live beyond their planet or possibly, I don't know, whatever, maybe rebuild it. It's... Um, Mercer is big concept. He's uh, he's he's taking up a place of God. So it's and and uh, towards the end, Decker becomes Mercer, right? Yeah. Right. And you can you can see that because what he, he becomes Mercer in that he finally obtains the empathy of Mercer. He obtains the the empathy uh, with his his species with life. With the androids, and he also sees things in the bigger context of time that previous, you know, very few people ever obtained a year back. Um, it's that it's that old wise man sitting, uh, you know, in a monastery on the mountain, you know, who's in tune with the universe and shit. Sure, sure. Actually, one one thing. What happened to Mr. Isidore? Like, um, I, I moved was... to the city to be near people. No, no, no. Well, one interesting, like before he became a chicken head, it w it was very odd. It was uh, I, I did not quite understand what they were. What did, what, did he become one of the X Men? He became. He was adopted. Like he was reviving animals. Is it his? 
Yeah, how did the spider Lucia? get its legs back? Mercer. Oh, it was okay. a, a, like a hallucination type thing. Yeah, there was one of the things with Isidore. Is, is Isidore actually reversing time with his mind, or does he simply think he is because he's brain damaged? Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want to try so to ask. That, so wait, so but so did the spider thing actually happen or now I'm confused? Exactly. exactly. So wait, you don't know what actually ha what is the reality exactly. and what's not in the story? Yes. Right. That's so confusing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's central to the story. That's central to the story because um how do you know whether I have empathy? How do you know I'm not a machine? Right? I'm I look like a, a human being on the yeah, so anyone anyone could actually be an android and not know it and have false memories. But as Mercer said, like he's he's not real, he's fake, but he's real. Mm -hmm. Can't remember exactly what he said, but that's basically the, the gist of what he's saying. Like he exists, but he's not real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Um. The the spider thing. Um. The whole police station with androids. Right. Yeah. Uh, because they said there was a bunch of people there who were also androids. Was that true or not? Right. No, because was that, then he that didn't other bounty being... hunter, he was human, but were the other people who work in that station or any of them androids? And why did the androids think that he was an android? And why did they make it? Why did they suggest that this Phil Rec guy and um and Rick would was that meat or were they suggested to be doppelgangers? That was the BBC version only, I think. Yeah, that wasn't okay. Um, well, in the yeah, book, he was just another bounty hunter that um, um, Deckard saw like the worst characteristics in himself yeah. as being amplified in him. Like he was the example of what Deckard didn't want to turn into. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, and here's the other thing: is how do you know that the people who are validated to be human are actually human? Well, because you trust what competence, right? Right, which they which right. they clarify in the beginning. They're always concerned that that test might not work on the next model, but you don't know if it actually worked on everyone of the previous model, right? Because they talk about retire, uh, accidentally retiring people or missing androids, which he almost did. He almost uh, missed an android on, at that first test, yep. right? That's why they were going to bribe him with the owl to to not reveal that he couldn't yeah. actually detect the android. And, and he was and just it, saying that the next generation would come out and then nobody could tell who is who. But then wouldn't they still have that four-year limitation or was he working his way around that too? Well, they have a four-year limitation. Uh, they're trying to work around it. They, they have not as yet. But it, it's all, you know, that, that unending grind of science. So yeah. You're, you're dealing with a civilization that has uh, been able to successfully colonize another world. Um, and is engineering artificial life so realistic you need to do a bone graft to tell the difference between a human being and an android. They have a very high level of science and engineering. Yeah. Um, and a mood yeah, control devices. Yeah. 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 Uh, some kind of virtual neural interface as well. Yep. Also, right, so. also uh, air cars. Oh, yeah. That, that's true. How, how did I overlook that? <laughs> so, that is also a recurring theme, basically helicopter style cars. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so flying cars, it's a definitely, I'm surprised that as long as it's been being written about as being the future that we have not gotten there yet. I know. <laughs> like it's, it's constantly recurring no, no, for over a hundred years Wait, before the car was even invented. We already got there. Actually. It already happened. We, we yeah, it's just um, there's no way to roll them out. Like, how would you control traffic? That's that's <laughs> the big problem. Is their health and safety issue. But we already have Hey, hey, we should just do it like we did when the automobile was invented, and we'll figure it out as we go. Yeah, those should be like hover lanes. Give me my goddamn above. flying car. Yeah. Can I point out that uh, drunk drivers exist? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm I'm cool with it. Right. That's what one of the things where I agree with the. Uh, the fucking what are, what are they called libertarians hmm. but you know what that problem will sort itself out eventually <laughs> only because the drunk drivers are going to go through your living room window yeah well we'll just have to build you know like reinforced roofs on the rainbows <laughs> no well the libertarians it's like a work because they'll be like 
no, but we don't have roads. She said, like, okay, great. That's why yeah. we need flying cars because we don't have roads. Yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> See, it all it all comes back around. And I'll tell you what, I, I'll, I'll sign off on that if I can have an air defense system over my over the airspace in my home. I know, oh, right? You violated my. You violated that's, my, my little that's what I'm airspace. saying, right? That that's that's yeah, one yeah. of the things that's going to happen, right? When we have flying shoot cars, down. then the airspace over our house will be private property. Mm -hmm. shoot them. You're like, hey, this guy. This guy just drove through my yard. I'm going to shoot him. I feel threatened. Violating the NAD. Surface to air missile. Yeah. Yeah. The way in the so, future. This this does anyway. So the recurring theme from um, all Philip K. Dick books is uh, questioning of reality. Um, he did that in Total Recall. He did that in um, oh geez, uh, Minority Report. He did it in a whole bunch of stuff. Um, yeah. Um, another one. Oh, I really uh, yeah, I really like that in uh, Minority Report. Right. It's all. I like, I like the way that was done. Yeah, it's it's all about um, uh, undermining your notion of, of really what reality is, and so uh, and he liked to use science fiction to do that to kind of pull people into a, a different context where where the technology starts to undermine your senses and the way that your your brain is put together to such an extent that you don't really you can't rely on on uh, these systems to validate what is and is not reality. Because you have the technology to twist it. Well, yeah, even even down to the uh, implanted uh, memories, right? Mm -hmm. yep. You you could have an entire life of memories implanted in your in your brain and think you are a person that you did all these things that never actually happened at all. Yep. See, right? like so the morality you can't of trust that. your own memory. Of, of creating these androids and then giving them robot memories and then not letting them know that they're robots. Well, or doing it to people, right? You wouldn't be able to trust your own knowledge and understanding of things and your own experiences that would all, they could all be fake. Because mm -hmm. who's to say you couldn't do it to a human as well? Well, you can, you can construct memories in humans all the time. It happens actually. Well, no, I'm saying <laughs> like give you an entire new life, right? Of memories. Well, Siggy, that's that's actually part of uh, Dick's point as well. Is that these stories are not poignant because uh, we one day may have this technology that lets us do this stuff. Rather, it, it's it's a, it's a, it is, it's uh, accentuating something that we've been doing to ourselves for tens of thousands of years. Right, this whole notion of of an engineered reality. Right. Where we, yeah. uh, we we create a worldview, we tell the story to each other about what it is, we buy into it, and suddenly we see the world through the gross tinted glasses that we've all been handed uh, since a small child, and 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 we use the filter of the, the universe around us to that. And so the question is, what is real? What is not real? What is this versus that? And why do these things even matter? I mean, it's arbitrary to a certain extent, and you can say, well, then that doesn't matter. It's the android said. But the human beings, that acknowledgement is death. So they can't. So they have to acknowledge on one level, yes, you're correct, androids, but at the same time, you're wrong. Well, yeah, because the androids are pretty scary sometimes. So well, they're stronger, they're faster, they're smarter, they don't need to sleep, they don't need to eat, they don't need to breathe. <clears throat> Which again begs the question, why would humans do that in the first place? And it, because they can, and is this something that's going to happen just because we can? Like, is this just an inevitable? Like, is Westworld going to be the future? Like, <laughs> it's like you know, it's like tigers giving lions another set of teeth. It doesn't make sense from you know a biological standpoint. Not really. Yeah, I mean, that they look that human doesn't make any sense necessarily for the humans, unless the point from the uh, Rosen Corporation is ultimately to have the robots completely replace the people in such a sense that we don't feel as a species like we've died because we've made such a perfect copy of ourselves in this artifact that, um, that effectively we, we've been reborn and reincarnated in the form of these, of these robots. That's, I mean, that's not stated. 
anywhere. The Rosen Corporation is doing that. It's the only thing I can think of makes any sense. To well, it, they do suggest that Rosen himself might also be an android. Yeah, but. Well, why do they have such a fascination about replacing, um, <clears throat> about, about perfectly copying the human name? Because, because sure. Well, I think the androids are angry with the humans. They realize what's being done to them. There was a very good, um, sorry for interrupting, but there was a very good quote. Uh, I don't remember in which one, if, if it was in the BBC version or in the original, but they basically said um, what God, God gave humans life, gave them many years to live, and then you made us, and you made us your slaves. And you gave us only four years to live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, not the slavery bit was intentional. The four years was. Well, yeah. So they kind of suggest that that four years thing, like they do say the metabolism thing, but they also kind of suggest that maybe it's also just to keep them under control. And then the other thing is, if they only have four years to live. Why not just put them in jail? Why does he have to retire them? Why does he have to kill yes. them if they're only like why does why does murder? Why can't they just take them in and reprogram them? Like it has to be murder. Well, they're it's, defective. Uh, they they killed people to escape. But Mars. they can't reproduce. Yeah, yeah. The point that he just made there is is, is spot on. Yeah, every single one of them uh, to get from Mars to, to Earth had to, be, had to murder their. Uh, the yeah, they did. So, yeah. that's so why, you that's can't be like, hey, guys, come on in. We're going to reprogram you. No, they're they're yeah, clearly they, dangerous. It's like, you know, the dog, for example, that that, uh, that goes and mauls a child or something. Um, mm. Yeah, you could potentially retrain that dog, but they don't. They just put it down. Right, like there's no bounty for retiring on un, un, uh, yeah, okay, uh, okay, okay. androids that don't have the little slip thing, right? Uh, which is what he told uh, Resh, right? He wouldn't get a bounty when, if he retired him if he was a if he was an android. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you know. Anyways, any any anything else we want to talk about? Hmm. I'm trying to see if I can find that line. Um, which line? Where I, I think it was one of the the last two androids in the final like showdown where he says that and then that's that's uh, actually rick's point where was the you what about the people that you guys murdered to get here was his response actually yeah yeah so oh the thing about um, only having the the four years lifespan being unintentional well but i, I bet they're still you know can hold it so against against humans yeah. And I mean, I don't know, like, why is it the whole, like, robots as our slaves thing? This is also a theme that reoccurs, which I guess, like, kind of makes sense, because if we are going to create a thing, we, we, we'd give it a purpose, a task. But, like, the idea is that they think, like, we're going to start abusing and whipping and beating the robots. Like, I don't... Well, part of the problem is human beings can't actually survive on Mars. That's one of the things that's actually acknowledged by Collins is so they, they talk about the uh, you know going off the planet well human beings can't survive off the planet they can't um they they, they have to stay in these uh, these very controlled um domed cities um you know with very limited resources uh environmentally and um the only thing that lets their uh the, the, the colonies function is that the androids don't have the same needs and uh, they basically do all the heavy lifting that actually keeps the colonies alive. Um, so they need, they have to have robots to so otherwise the human beings couldn't even live on Mars. So they just they'd all die instantly. So there you go. So uh, what, what, what do you think in this universe is hindering the, the rise of the machines? Or just <laughs> just their lifespan. Well, no, I think it's it's human ineptness to not be able to build them yet. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting close, though. But no, no, in the book, in the in the book, the androids rising up and and uh, overthrowing the humans on Mars or something like that. 
Because clearly well, hey, they, they they can kill people, so it's not like they're they're limited in in that regard. I, I, I feel like it's like the old Battlestar Galactica kind of, like this kind of reminded me of that too, where like the future would be Cylons, where robots and humans will merge, and that's the only way they could survive the conditions of the planet after the nuclear war. Well, so that I guess is, is if the robots uh, had more empathy for the human beings, they might actually be better for the human beings actually moving forward, which is to take care of the humans. It's yeah, right. I guess that's true. You know, if robots actually cared about the people, then, then they would uh, they want to help, them, and they would they'd be better partners. Yeah, see, there, there's a big plot hole. You could have just artificially yeah. put in memories of, of being caregivers and empathetic. And they but would they think said that, that they don't want to put empathy in them. Like they can, but there's limits to how much empathy you could put. Like that was by design. And then this is why, like in the in the story, and then they make, they overload empathy into the human population to create this distinction in the first yeah. place. I don't, I don't. I don't think that was actually there. I don't think they had a limit how much empathy they could put in on purpose. I think they were. Uh, well, it was reactionary to the wars. Yeah. I don't. I think that there was only so much empathy that they could put into the robots because they didn't know how to put in there. I think that was what the Rosen Corporation was always trying to do: is they were trying to make these machines pass for humans perfectly. Um, and and if they could do that by making giving them you know full human reaction to everything. I think Rosen Corporation would do that. They just couldn't figure out how to do it. Well, they were saying that the next the next model would be able to do that, but there were limits to how much, like they, he, they even said that the uh, Nexus 6 still um, has higher levels of empathy, but still um, meets the limit of levels of empathy that you can put into a robot. Unless that was just the BBC version that that made that. Yeah, let's let's not concern ourselves with the BBC version. Yeah, so that could have been a way, like a, a something in the book in this in that story, but mm -hmm. they made it as though like there was a potential where you could increase empathy into the robots, but it was they there was limits. Like the law was that you couldn't. There was laws that limited how much. Oh no, the Rosen Corporation was gonna shit the laws. Right. That's nonsense. The uh, if, if, if the Rosen Corporation really gave a shit the law, because the police keep complaining about the robots being harder and harder to detect. This isn't the first time it's happened. It's happened repeatedly. Every single time it happens, the police are like, "Dude, why? <laughs> you could make them fucking blue, and it would be like really easy. I would. But it's like, <laughs> this whole crazy thing that I got to do." I gotta do goddamn bone grafts. Give me a goddamn break. <laughs> do you mind, like, I don't know, put a serial number on their fucking foreheads. You're killing me. Okay, but there. Why? So why would why would the future of androids? Why would we make them look like rope, like human? Well, it's the Rosen Corporation that's doing it. So you, it, yeah, and people are doing that now. Yeah. Um. Like obviously our technology is nothing remotely close to that, but they're at least trying to skin robots to look like humans. Mm -hmm. Animatronics um, would be a good example. That's been around for a long time. Um, sex robots, yep. right? Clearly trying to make yeah. them look human. I mean, there are reasons for it, for using them for entertainment purposes, using, um, well, the, um, entertainment. The their Corporation says the reason that they do it, I don't know if this is true, but this is when they're asked, they say the reason we make them this way is because the colonists ask for it. Um, <laughs> yeah. The other thing that they say is that they do, even though it's against the law, the colonists also have sex with them. I right. think part of it is also pure ambition. Yeah, and maybe the god complex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not my god. Not in my not in my <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, that's a, that's a human race in that in that book. It kind of needs God. I'm not, you know, it, it, it's like okay, you've lost your planet. You're fucked. So you kind of you need something. It's like, okay, I'm sorry. I shat the bed. Help me out. So did the androids come after the nuclear war or before? Were they there? That's very unclear. Is that, I know that that's not like a main part of the story, but it still sets, like it, it is, the, it does set the, the, what's the word I'm looking for? The nature, the, I don't know. But like, are they there? <laughs> 
Well, one thing that, that uh, they talk about is that it was neither side of the war that actually uh, poisoned the world. It was a third party. It was not mm -hmm. in the war. So was the was third party the nose? androids? No, uh, they, the the they don't know who the third party was. Because then that would make sense of why they would be so freaked out by androids and so, like, they're not human, they're not... Uh, it's well, an I mean, it's if that not... was the case, they'd stop creating no. them. They would just outlaw listen, androids. Listen, listen, listen. listen. My, my, my tinfoil is sparkling. Look, <laughs> the Rosen Corporation did this. They had, like, the, <laughs> the, the either the alien race or the Illuminati Jew type of... <laughs> Car company. I mean, think of it. The reason why they changed the name in the uh, film was obviously to let, to make it sound less Jewish, and, <laughs> and 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 obviously they, they needed to distract humanity. They needed to 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 uh, release all that poison, and now they're trying to replace humanity with androids. All makes sense. I wash my hands. Okay, you're, you're just a bigot. Yes. That's what I'm getting out of this. You're just an anti-Semite. <laughs> look, I'm, but I'm nice. Like I would gas you, but I would be very nice about it. It would be a nice oh. smelling gas. There'll be flowers there. <laughs> yeah, it would be potpourri scented gas. <laughs> yes. Okay. I, have we have we have we milked this cow? I don't know. I, what, what did you um? What did you like about uh, What did I like about it? Yeah, the the, the killing, really all the killing. Well, I like he had the um, the emotional realization that he was starting to empathize with the androids, but he was kind of being manipulated the whole time. Um, mm -hmm. But when he found the toad, like he he kind of felt better. Like he he found something that he thought was extinct. Like that gave him a, a sense of uh, pride. And then when they're uh, was it his wife mm -hmm. that pointed out that it, it was. Um, an android or a fake animal. Yeah. You know, he got he got really depressed. Um you know, so it's kinda like he he's constantly seeking I don't know, not not validation. Redemption. Um redemption. yeah, redemption, yeah. Um but he he, he doesn't find it. And then the story ends. So like that's uh I, I like that aspect of it. I just wonder because they also talk about like depression and loneliness being so high in this population even despite all of this empathy that's being pumped in, why is like the need for animals so strong and why can't the humans connect to each other? Well, they're not, they're not getting the animals to connect to the animals. They're getting the animals to uh, redeem the species from the crime of killing the animals. No, but I mean like even him wanting a real animal, like mm -hmm. him like wanting this pet, this thing. That's like real and 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 bio and you know like it's this need it, it shows that they want something to empathize with but it it seems like in this world humans are not empathizing with each other that much they're empathizing with animals but maybe not with each other because even in their relationship like uh, since you guys have been talking about it and I was reading over it and stuff it seems like both are in their own world and they don't even don't even um, consider what's going on with the other. Mm -hmm. It's maybe, showing... because of, maybe it's because of that fusion thing that we experience. Yeah, or not knowing what's real and what's not. It could be... Um... So I guess, yeah, and that would make, explain why they want an animal, because it's something that's real. You want something tangible to hold on to that you know is real. Yes, yes. and humans can lie. And that's not it also validates that. their existence, is the other thing. Is, is the planet was, was murdered, and um, it... Every day you're alive. Why are you alive? Why? Why? What validates your existence? And oh yeah, the uh, the other um, bounty hunter, right? He was talking about his squirrel. Mm. Yeah. Right? He was. He was very, very much that. That was his justification of how he's not an android and he shouldn't be retired because he has yeah. the squirrel and he cares about the squirrel. The squirrel is important to him. And how it runs around the apartment when he lets it out of the cage because he doesn't like seeing it in a cage. Hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. True. yeah I mean, I, true. Enormous guilt. They have enormous guilt for, for murdering your planet. Yes. Imagine, imagine 
you know, going about your business outside and not seeing any life, basically. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. no pigeons, no crows, nothing. Sucks. No insects. I, w- I wouldn't like that. No, um, it's worse than that. No, there's no mold. There's no, yes. uh, there's no rot. You can put, um, you can put a heap no. of garbage um, out, out there, and it will just sit there and, yeah. and, uh, and basically desiccate. So, oh, very. Thank you for reminding. The uh, uh, entropy was a huge theme here with the kipple and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Do you want to elaborate on that? <laughs> no, please, <laughs> la- you elaborate. <laughs> the kippleization, yeah, no, uh, what, what's his name? Uh, the, the special talk about that. He was, um, he, I think he was one of the, um, you never knew what he, what he, uh, what, what he was saying was right or wrong uh, based on his infirmity, but he was the one who was less likely to be consciously lying about it. So yeah, yeah, there was an authenticity about him, even even in his uh, in in his uh, infirmity. You know, he was he was trying, and to a certain extent. Go on. <laughs> okay. okay, all right. So how does this play into all our other dystopian future books? Um, the the future was dystopian, but the story wasn't really about that, right? Like, I mean, yeah. it it set the scene, but not so much like um, like Fahrenheit was very much about how there was control. Reading books was banned. The books were burned because they they gave people like emotional responses to things, which caused disagreements, and so it was better to just burn them all. Um, you know, this this wasn't really uh, well, for me, taking I that approach. The role of te- what? The role of technology, I think, is like a theme in all of them. Even in Fahrenheit, the way they use technology to control people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that's you know, I can't remember what it's called. The uh, the Amish, I think, were the ones who were uh, the the creators of the term, but the the fear of technology. I can't remember what it's called. Just right, where they said, "No, no, this, this, this 1790 technology, we're good here. We're just gonna, we're just gonna stop." Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you get that with uh, every generation as new technology comes out, and they're they're constantly afraid the technology has advanced too far. And at some point, that'll probably be true. What? Mm. Right? Like, remember they used to say in the 19 teens uh, that the automobile, if you drove too fast, um. The babies wouldn't be able to breathe anymore from the speed mm. of the car, and it would kill them. <laughs> and the atom bombs will ignite the atmosphere. Yep. That's not how uh, chemistry yeah, works. Yeah. Every 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 generation with the new technology, there's there's something that they're afraid of. Right. It's not it's not new. Like these conspiracy theories, they just change a little bit. So like when it comes to technology, it's just a new technology, same fear. Right, but I, I think like the consequences of technology is are very real. Like maybe not end of the world, but even now we've talked even amongst ourselves about how social media and yes. and technology. But that's and not the technology changing. doing it. Well, yeah, but it's about how again, like humans and and how we react to technology and how we are we can... still involved to be hunter gatherers, and we you know have to deal with all those things. It's it's a huge cognitive load, and even the escape the escapism in the book. Like, how do we not do that in our own worlds? We maybe don't have like a little virtual reality we put on our heads yet, but we're working towards that. And people are constantly going and focusing on in fictional worlds of their own. Part of part of what uh, is is interesting is is the um, it starts to blur the line between the physical and the metaphysical. Right, as as your physical capabilities are are limited, um, a lot of that your ideas, your beliefs, they can't manifest themselves in the same way. But the greater your power, the greater your sophistication becomes, the more you can just imagine something and make it happen. Right, um, and so it starts to blur the line between um, belief 
and reality because simply by believing something and wanting it to happen, if you have enough capability, it just happens. So in this case, they've created people, right? They've created these androids because they wanted to. They, um, the animals are dead. The owl was extinct. I, I made a new owl. You can't tell the difference between the, the owl like raven and, and the real thing unless you uh, split the damn thing open. And, you know, that's going to kill the owl. So, and it is, it is yeah, it necessary so you don't want to do that for risk of it being a real owl. Well, and it happened means, with the cat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Poor cat. Um, <laughs> that the that the owner of the cat actually thought was a uh, was a it was it was an android cat. The and the, the owner of the cat thought his cat was a false cat. He did. Was, yeah. I thought he just. Well, yeah. The the comp no. Well, the company that the <laughs> the uh, chicken head worked for del deals with android animals. So if he called them, you would you would assume that he must have thought his pet was. An I android. thought he just mistook uh, them for a real pet shop. That's well, also true. For yeah, because yeah, they do misrepresent themselves a little bit. They've got a surface layer where they pretend to be a, a, a veterinary institution. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're very quickly in, it becomes obvious that they're, uh, they, they just maintain and build uh, Android animals. Yeah. yeah, because for social reasons, you know, it's not cool to have an electronic animal. So they mm -hmm. pretend to be real. And, and my assumption was that he called them thinking they were actually real. Mm -hmm. That's possible. Although he he did seem to kind of throw the uh, the cat at, yeah. at him and and sort of and I think he said something along the lines of fix it or something. It's malfunctioning. I, I don't I don't think he oh. I think he believed it. I, I think he believed it was a false cat. Um, but his, but his if, wife but, believed it was a real cat. Yes, and if she told him, but she, you know, spoke about what the cat would do when it was little. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. So well, and can, a little cats grow to bigger cats. So. What if it died though? What if it, what if uh, she remembers her little kitten cat and then one day it got sick, and he replaced her cat with a false cat or thinks ah. funny or something. I mean, there's no. Yeah, like Decker did with the sheep. Yeah. He didn't tell exactly. anybody that it got sick. He took it to the vet. It died. He got a false sheep mm. and then pretended it was real. And then when his wife. When, yeah, when he. Uh, the but his wife would have been able to tell. Only if she. That's yeah. what they say. Remember that yeah. they say that the they, owner can always tell. They say all kinds of things. They say all kinds of things. So one of the things that they've built into these animals is that uh, when they uh, start to have some sort of core malfunction, yeah. it will trigger a um, a realistic sickness reflex in the animal. So, um, like if it has some sort of mechanical problem, what will happen is it will start behaving like a sick animal. Um, to indicate that it needs to be uh, sent somewhere. Yeah, but that story is very confusing because if they had the that cat since it was little, then they had to have seen it grow. But the guy probably did think that it was not real, and then it's, yeah. it's odd. Well, maybe maybe he got married to his wife, um, and he just assumed that her cat was always fake or something. Apparently, he didn't interact. With much and she she did and then he just thought his wife had a big cat or maybe they didn't get it as a kitten maybe they bought it as a cat no 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 that i i it's stupid yeah, I they didn't get it as a kitten yeah no, she said she 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 raised it kitten. okay yeah but for whatever reason her husband thought it was artificial i don't know why huh. very odd yeah and uh and then and then that poor bastard uh, is is got this uh, this hacking cat um, in his in his uh, repair van, and he's trying to make sure that uh, you know it, it's well tended. He thinks it's a machine, and he's trying to so he, he opens the cat up to try and plug in the power uh, backup power source. He fucking kills it because yeah, he's just like what, he hey. killed it. Yeah, yeah, he kills it accidentally. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, I thought that it it just died. Well, that's what his um his company ultimately determined they were going to go with for their narrative on that one. It oh. was like if, if the animal was sick enough, it was probably going to die anyway. Um, but yeah, he, he did kill it. Oh god! And he felt really bad about it. 
He felt bad, you think? Oh, yeah. No, no. He felt horrible about it. But, but, he, but after he made the phone call, he felt good already. He felt um, good about ha having made the phone call and everything, and he seemed to have forgotten about the cat. He felt better uh, after he was forced by his, his boss to talk to him. But, um, but he was trying to redeem himself because he, he I mean, it, it had religious significance to him. He was told that he killed a, a living cat. Mm. That was that, like he, he basically felt like he committed a mortal sin and he was full of a lot of shame as well. And, uh, and, and uh, insecurity because on top of everything else that all the regular human beings have got, he's also basically retarded. And and it's it's a progressive thing. Like he gets dumber every year, uh, just because uh, it, it's a, a degenerative condition. Dust. Uh, his employer, for example, is not getting dumb. He's getting um, blind. Yeah. Um, there's different people. They're all. Everyone who stays on the planet uh, is. The, the dust affects him differently, and so his boss is, is slowly going blind, and um, and uh, he's going uh, 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 special. He's uh, becoming more and more retarded, and it's happening to everybody. Uh, ultimately, anyone stays on the planet, um, and, and they're they're going to start to generate, particularly if they're out in the, uh, the environment. And they suggest his his specialness is what allows him to empathize very strongly with everyone, including androids. Hmm. Well, also he, he feels so alienated from the rest of humanity that even the um, the facsimile of humanity that he gets from the androids makes him feel better. Like the androids need him, and so he feels he's been really living alone in this very isolated, alienated existence. Uh, as the cast off of humanity on a dead world, that's his experience. He's he's a, a person who isn't worth um, the fuel that it costs to send him to another world. Um, so he's stuck. He so he can't leave, and he gets a little dumber every year. And uh, the entire world is dying around him, or is dead. He lives in a uh, in a completely abandoned apartment building, in a completely abandoned neighborhood. He's the only person there. Uh, every single apartment that he's not in is uh, full of um, the, uh, the rotted or, or, or grimy uh, remnants of the previous tenants. You know, all the things that they, their, their family photos and their furniture and their clothing and whatever. But they just left in their apartments when they, when they, when they died or left. And, uh, and so that's, he has kind of a grim existence and that's what he's got. And so then the androids come. He, um, he he it, 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 he made, he feels more alive uh, just being able to interact. He's probably the only person who can be sure is actually being made in the entire story. I wonder who. Yep. They, they wouldn't make they wouldn't make a special android. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so should we should I watch the Blade Runner movie? Is it any good? <laughs> I, I like I like the movie. Um, compared to the story, it's not really the same story. It has the the same general premise. That's about it. It's mm -hmm. not as bad as World War Z, but uh, it, oh, it doesn't. Okay. Like, <laughs> if you read that book and you watch that movie, you're like, yeah, this, no, that, how is this based on the same thing? What the all, fuck? At all. <laughs> All they took was the title. World War Z is actually I, I really like that book, and I'm not into the zombie stuff that much. But is it the way the that that save the world. No, but just because the way that they, I liked it because every single zombie apocalypse one is about after the zombies have already come out and yeah. it doesn't like have the incidences of what happens to lead to those. And I like that book and the way that they did it. And then it had different perspectives. We should read that on book club. Okay. Well, um, maybe for March as I have the, uh, some of the books that I thought we'd, uh, we'd, we'd, uh, consider okay so little, what are get a little are we, poll are, so other people can join in so, so are can, we uh, done our analysis have we gone into in depth enough uh i don't know do you have anything else on the book you wanted to add no i think we covered everything lady bastard no not really will if, uh you guys wanted to uh watch there's a there's a um, 
There's a program that does uh, some of Bill K. Dick's short stories um, as, a, as a television program uh, that apparently has pretty high production value. Uh, I will be screening those um, later if you guys mm -hmm. want to watch those with me Okay. Um, I mean, I, the one thing that I do like about what I was listening to was in the beginning, I was empathizing with the androids more, especially with that with uh, I like the Rachel characters. But once the um, that whole spider incident thing happened, that kind of made a shift for me. And then I'm like, OK, well, maybe um, maybe they really are kind of dangerous and sociopathic. Kind of interesting. For me, yeah. it was from the beginning. I was um, sort of um, against the androids being, you know, running away and whatnot. Yeah. Um, in in hindsight, after the end of the book, you realize that the entire time Rachel was trying to manipulate Deckard and yeah. control him. Yeah. In interesting that that's the the character that you initially. Uh, I liked her though. Liked. I don't know. I liked the the opera singer, but still. Yeah, she was interesting too. I read that. Yeah, that that uh, that section also was what stood out for me was when she's looking at the painting. Um, I really like that. And and yeah. Well, let's 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 get okay. So let's touch on a couple of themes and see if, if uh, we've got some conclusions on this. Let's say the Rosen Corporation creates an android that no void pop test or anything actually works on. That they are in all senses, perhaps with the exception of bone graph. Uh, indistinguishable from the human being. Would you empathize with them? Would you see them maybe as kin to yourself? You literally cannot tell the difference between them and, and, and a totally normal human being. Um, would you would you see them basically as human? Like with with the line, line of the cross where we've had, okay, congratulations, you made a totally artificial human. Did they like were they made as a child and then grow, or are they a full formed adult? Well, you can say the experience, but let's say I, I, I have a full organic human being, or I have a totally human being, but I implant memories. Is that person not oh, yeah. a human being? Well, I mean, as, if they think that they're human, yeah. and then, yeah, it, like, they should be right. treated as human. <laughs> Right, so you I, mean, I know, I know, like the gender pronoun thing, where if a guy thinks he's a girl, we're 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 a little bit unsure <laughs> about that one. But I mean, in this kind of case, if you're programming it to believe that it's human, and then you don't treat it like it's human, that's just evil. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. the, the, I disagree. I just... <laughs> for me, no. For me, I think, like, I would extend it uh, some some level of empathy. I think, but ultimately. No, I would view it as a threat. What if it, what if it saw you as, uh, what if it had empathy for you? I mean, that's why it has all the book It has empathy for you. Have you guys watched Ex Machina? Because I feel like even the Rachel character is similar to that to the girl in that mm -hmm. movie. No, I haven't. So, huh? Oh, actually, yes, I have. It, yeah, it's it's really it's because it touches on the whole thing where it's it's they try to do the Turing test with her and he's trying to uh, really figure out if she believes that she's like a real human or if she believe if she has the ability to empathy and then the entire time she's also she's that the the real test was for him and I, I guess I would ruin it for you guys I shouldn't ruin it but but no, anyways it's still it. a good movie it's still a really good movie and it Completely touches on the theme of this book um a lot it's actually very similar that's I, I, that's what i kept thinking about when i was um when i was listening to it mm. that um that movie really does highlight and they and they create the, the the bodies to be humanoid so you do have um this whole thing of questioning reality in it as well um mm. and also i guess these themes are also being touched upon in westworld a little bit about mm -hmm. treating whether they should be treated as humans if they believe that they are and the morality behind that. For sure. You guys well, no, watch I mean, that show. That show's incredible. Dick, Dick's, uh, Dick's writing is it's very influential on the entire genre. Um, so anyone who writes a story like this is generally speaking with Ori Red Dick. Um, in many cases, Dick would have literally inspired them to write it. So there's there's a there's a building upon on that. Yeah, I can see that. All right, so you guys want to hear these uh, these title suggestions? Yeah, of course. Well, 
Um, I threw this one in there just because uh, I'm a little curious. The Handmaid's Tale. Uh, does anyone need to to hear a plot for that? Sure. I feel like that one's a famous book. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's the, it's a famous title because they made a miniseries show. Oh. Uh, um, uh. But I, I, I watched the miniseries, and it was done very shittily, but it still won awards because it was all, oh, Christians are bad, and they're going to force us to be sex slaves, right? Um, so basically a totalitarian theocratic state replaces the United <laughs> States, and uh, there's also some kind of infertility thing going around with the women. So if a woman is capable of having children, she gets turned into a, a handmaid where she works for one of the uh, the elites in the government um, married couple to be basically a surrogate mother that the, the husband will impregnate. And then when she has the baby, she's shipped off to the next family. Hmm. All right. So that's that's the uh, the general. And it's a uh, the, the okay, plot the is following version. Alfred, who is a handmaid. Yeah. There's actually a new TV series on Hulu that's Hulu, Hulu, Hulu. Hulu. <laughs> Sorry, Hulu. The Handmaid's <laughs> Tale is based on this book, the show on Hulu. Yeah, yeah. that that is the storyline that I don't know. I've never read Margaret Atwood. I feel like um, I don't know if her writing style is is she wordy? How wordy is she? I don't know. I haven't I haven't looked at the book, but I watched the show, and the show is shit. So I was curious. Hmm. Um, mm -hmm. To see, I got no problem with it. What the book was. What are the other options? The, all right. So, Swastika Night is apparently written by a feminist author in 1937, and it's a dystopian future. Uh, it takes place in a world where the Nazi and the e Empire of Japan defeated their enemies and conquered the world. And so now it's the uh, follows the protagonist, Alfred an Englishman in his 30s who works as a ground mechanic for the German Empire in Salisbury Aero, uh, Aerodome. Um, it was praised for having good female character development because the uh, the female author. But I liked the, the, the premise of it because it kind of reminds mm -hmm. you like the man in High Castle type of, type of uh, mm -hmm. future. Mm -hmm. And so I was curious about that. Okay. The, this, the guy that wrote this, right? Mm -hmm. the, the book. I, w I would like to read that at some point as mm -hmm. well. I really like the show. All of them. Uh, books are good. His Neuromancer. Good. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. which you, you can go ahead and uh, describe that one because I think you already you were the one talking about it earlier. Mm -hmm. Will? Did you, oh, Actually, right, no, yeah. I, think, I think what I suggested was um, Snow Crash. Um, uh, yeah, that, that was, yeah, that was one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I forget what Neuromancer is about. I, I have read that one. Right, so let's see. Cyberpunk right, genre. Mm -hmm. Henry Doris Case is a low-level hustler in the dystopian underworld of Shiba City, Japan. Once mm -hmm. a talented computer hacker, Case was caught stealing from his employer. As punishment for his theft, Case's central nervous system was damaged by a my mycotoxin, leaving him unable to access the global computer network in cyberspace, a virtual reality database called The Matrix. Case is unemployable, suicidal, and apparently at the top of a hit list of a drug lord named Wage. Case is saved by Molly Millions, an augmented street samurai and mercenary for a shadowy ex-military officer named Armitage. Mm. So, he basically gets pulled out of The Matrix, kind of like the movie The Matrix. Um, mm -hmm but not everybody's living in the matrix and they're slaves to machines type thing, but uh, pulled out as a punishment. Mm -hmm. And I have uh, two other options. Mm -hmm. The iron heel is another mm -hmm. um, world war two uh, written book. And if I remember the plot correctly, um, crap, where is it? Uh, it's written as though, all, all communication, or I think it was the Cold War, mm. uh, but all communication and politics breaks down. Mm. Uh, so, like, no no real country state exists, I believe is mm. what, it, what it said. But for some reason, I seem to have closed it but kept the uh, the actual book open. Mm. Um, 
And then Article mm-hmm. 5 is a new book, which I haven't been able to find it, but I'm sure it's out there somewhere. came mm-hmm. out in January 2012. Uh, War tore through the United States leading to the implementing of the Federal Bureau of Reformation and a rewriting of the Bill of Rights leaving the moral statues. The FBR have started a new war, and that's a war on sex. Women – that break Article 5 and have children out of wedlock are taken away and imprisoned, as is the case of Ember Miller's mother. The FBR have captured the two of them and have sent Ember to the Girls' Reformatory and Rehabilitation Center in West Virginia. There, Ember attempts and fails to escape, only succeeding when her old love interest, Chase, intervenes and runs away with her to Virginia. Hmm. Hmm. I wouldn't mind doing like because uh, most of the books that we have done have been older ones thus far, have they not? Yes. I mean, even American Grads was a little bit older, not too much then, but so I wouldn't mind doing something a little bit more recent. I so said the the Hands Made Tale, I believe, was the late 1980s. Swastika Night is the 1930s. Necromancer, I believe, is the 80s as well. Neuromancer. Yeah. yeah. Neuromancer, sorry. Neuromancer is the 80s as well. Um, the Iron Heel, I think, was the 30s. What's And what was the and one Article we just did? Was, Article 5 was 2012. How about this book? When did the book that we just did come out? Um, that's a good question. I don't remember the year. Let me look. It's oh it's goodness. either going to be the late 70s or the year. It was 70s, 68. It was published in 68. Was it so yeah, 68? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm done. All of those actually sound really good. I like the Neuromancer one too. But All right. Well, I put the straw poll in the book club on the Discord. Um, <laughs> so you could take a little bit of time and look at it. But uh, basically, I would say by tomorrow night, we'll, we'll know and then post whatever the book is, depending what the results are. So you have mm-hmm. some time to actually look at it and think about it. Oh, this is see cool. the writing styles because I, I don't want to pick a book that people are like I don't like the way it's written. Um, okay. For for us non-native English tongue folk. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah. Does that sound good? Yeah. Do we want to set the next date or are we gonna wait until we pick the book? I was going to say the last Sunday of February, which would be the twenty fifth. Hmm. Okay. Does that sound good to everybody? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. And if you want to join the book club, you can join the Discord. And uh, it's it's in there. And then you'll be in there. And you can read the book. And you can be in the live stream. Tell us what you think. Unless your name is Erwin. You're not invited. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just can't let him pick books. <laughs> Would Erwin well, no. read the book? Is he... He came in. He didn't actually read the book. Remember, yeah, he was in yeah. like an hour, and then he was like, "Oh, I, I actually didn't read the book," and he was just yeah. making. Wait, wild did he not shit. read a Fahrenheit four fifty one? I thought he did. I thought no. he did too. Nope. No, and then he suggested a book, and the book was like ten pages long. <laughs> yes. So uh, that's not such a bad idea to have very short stories, and I don't know, compare yeah. them and whatnot. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but he just picked that one idea. short. And that was it. That's all he did. No, mm-hmm. we could do short stories. That'd be. We could do more. Uh, if you guys want to do more book clubs, um, a lot of what controls how often we do these is how long. The book yeah, is. how long the book is. Yeah. But if they were yeah. short stories, uh, we might mm-hmm. be able to do this once a week if you wanted to. Right. It seems really hipstery. Short yeah. stories are like. <laughs> you have no idea. Like my philosophy friends would like write like poetry and short mm-hmm. story and talk, and then yeah. <laughs> I wear glasses without the lenses. Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> any any closing statements you guys want to make? Mm. Join our book club. Mm. That's a good book. I like that one. Mm. Did and I just join time. a book? Did I just join a book club, or do I only think I did? Right. Mm. This is all a figment of your imagination. You're sort right. of right. Our you book club is a um, requirement. <laughs> I just I, I read a book and then I sit down and I imagine the book club. <laughs> right. oh, do we have you multiple? Know it's real. <laughs> do we have multiple book clubs or is it just one huge book club? 
No. Well, there you go. Here, I got I got a good question for you. Am I imagining the book club that actually happened, or am I am I hearing what you're saying and then just imagining something? Are you guys real people? Maybe you're on right <laughs> robots and androids. Well, no, how, about, how about this? How about, how about this? What if you mm -hmm. are an imagination, but their imagination mm -hmm. is so vivid that you think you are real, but you're actually imaginary yourself? No. Maybe I am Lady Bastard's uh, uh, character, Lady Bastard, in the book. Yep. And you, you think you're real, but it, you're actually just in somebody's head. I'm only asking this question because Lady Bastard imagines I would. <laughs> <laughs> what? Sorry, exactly. didn't hear that. See? <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of the uh, that that Black Mirror episode, mm -hmm. right? He created them all, and they were all living in his universe, but none of them were real. But they yeah. acted as though they were real. So what? Mm -hmm. What if in in the imagination, when you you have like an imaginary friend or an imaginate um, an imagined scenario, what if that person mm -hmm. actually thought they were real? So their entire life, you know, was awesome. in like a split second in your whatever your thought process was. But to them, mm -hmm. it was the entire universe, and they existed. Mm -hmm. So if mm -hmm. you're imagining murdering someone, you're actually murdering them in your imagination, and they're real people. <laughs> right. So like in yes. your imagination, they could actually be a their own little consciousness that so had an entire life that you took away. That's why that's why in Christianity even the mere thought of the sin is a sin. Yep. Huh? Because yep. Was, God, God tried to warn us but nobody would listen. Yeah. Heathens. Mercer, Mercer then, tried, then we're all murder. everybody's psychotic in that case <laughs> and murderers. Maybe yeah. Because yeah. we don't have enough empathy. Our, that's why we have to. That's why we have to guilt trip ourselves because we're <laughs> sinners. Yep. We need to create an empathy box. That's what we need. <laughs> yeah. hmm. So we'll solve all of our problems. All right. Any, 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 I mean, any a, a glass of uh, any barman, I think, will do. <laughs> any closing statement, anybody? Well, that's that that's it? all in your mind. <laughs> yeah, that was my that was my closing statement. All right. Well, take the uh, red pill. See, see you all February. <laughs> pick, a, pick a book, pick a book, so I can I can try to find that uh, that thing. So, yeah. and if you join the book club, then you get to vote the next time around. But uh, I never uh, got to vote. You can vote right now if you go over to the Discord. Into what the if book we club all vote for one different one? Then what happens? Well, <laughs> the, these things happen. Theoretically, you could also come up with something totally different. If, you, if there's something on his list that you didn't that you, that you didn't like, maybe something you wanted to put in there. You can just yep. write it in there. You can write it in. In, 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 in his head? <laughs> yes. No, Lady Bastards. There's no one in his head but your head. We're all figments in your imagination. Your <laughs> Come yes. on, keep up, Lady Bastard. Come on. Uh, maybe maybe that's why I forget words all the time is because I'm in Thank Lady you. Bastard's head. Yeah. And I can speak she, proper English. Yeah, she, she's not good with the English. I mean, she's like, no, what is the no, word for that? None of us do. You just, you just imagine that we do. Right. <laughs> We've been using okay, words wrong the eat, entire so. time. Okay. Mm -hmm.